In this video, we will discuss binocular and monocular diplopia. Our objectives are the following. Define binocular and monocular diplopia. Discuss the presentations, causes, evaluation, and management of binocular diplopia. And discuss the presentations, causes, evaluation, and management of monocular diplopia. First, we will define our topics of discussion. Diplopia is double vision, or seeing two of the same objects simultaneously. Binocular diplopia is double vision that resolves by covering either eye. Monocular diplopia is double vision that resolves only when the affected eye is covered. We will begin with the discussion of binocular diplopia. A patient with binocular diplopia may describe seeing a distinct second image, or blurry vision with both eyes open. The diplopia can be horizontal, meaning that two of the same images are seen side by side, or vertical, meaning that two of the same images are seen in up-down relation. Oblique diplopia consists of both a horizontal and a vertical component. Some conditions can present with either vertical or horizontal diplopia. Binocular diplopia can be constant, intermittent, or variable. Diplopia that is worse in the morning may point to thyroid eye disease, whereas diplopia that is worse in the evening or with fatigue may point to myasthenia gravis. Finally, binocular diplopia can be comitant, which means that deviation is the same size in all directions of gaze, or incomitant, which means that deviation changes based on the position of gaze. Binocular diplopia is due to ocular misalignment related to various etiologies. Binocular diplopia with comitant deviation can be due to decompensated long-standing strabismus. Infantile and childhood strabismus are not usually associated with diplopia due to suppression, which is an adaptation in which the visual neurons in the brain reduce their responsiveness to input from one eye. The causes of binocular diplopia with incompetent deviation can occur at the nerve, muscle, or neuromuscular junction. Causes of binocular diplopia involving the nerve include cranial nerve palsy, which can be a sequela of microvascular ischemia, stroke, compression by aneurysm, tumor, vasculitis, or granuloma, head traumas, or demyelination. Causes of binocular diplopia involving the muscle include trauma leading to orbital floor fracture and thyroid eye disease restricting the inferior rectus muscle. Giant cell arteritis can lead to nerve or muscle ischemia. Binocular diplopia with incompetent deviation involving the neuromuscular junction can be caused by myasthenia gravis. Evaluation of binocular diplopia begins with taking a careful history. Be sure to ask about whether the diplopia is horizontal, vertical, or oblique, and about competency. Also inquire about onset duration and frequency, as well as associated disease, exacerbating and alleviating factors, past medical conditions, and prior eye muscle surgery. Asking about associated symptoms can help elucidate the cause of binocular diplopia. A patient might have an atypical head position, such as a head tilt associated with trochlear nerve palsy. The presence of ptosis can point to an oculomotor nerve palsy or myasthenia gravis. Eyelid retraction can indicate thyroid eye disease. Some associated symptoms point to conditions that mandate urgent workup. Facial numbness or involvement of multiple cranial nerves can indicate a tumor or involvement of the cavernous sinus. A new headache, scalp tenderness, and jaw claudication in an older patient raise suspicion for giant cell arteritis. Dysarthria, dysphagia, and proximal weakness point to myasthenia gravis. Eye examination of binocular diplopia should include assessment of local findings, such as eyelid position, presence or absence of facial sensation, and orbicularis oculi strength. Assess the cause of the eyes individually and together. Be sure to evaluate ocular motility, alignment, and pupil involvement. If a patient has abnormalities of more than one of the following, the lid, pupil, or eye movement, then evaluation for life-threatening causes with imaging and neurological or neurosurgical evaluation is necessary. On the other hand, if a patient has an isolated 4th or 6th cranial nerve palsy, observation may be indicated initially because the etiologies are not as urgent. But if a patient has a 3rd cranial nerve palsy, then CT angiography or MR angiography are indicated to rule out concern for an aneurysm. Treatment of binocular diplopia should of course involve treating the underlying pathologic cause when possible. The goal of symptomatic treatment of binocular diplopia is to achieve the largest and most central area of single binocular vision. The most conservative method is occlusion of one eye, which can be achieved by various methods, including wearing an eye patch or attaching tape or occlusion foils to an eyeglasses lens. Children under 9 years old should alternate the eye occluded to avoid the development of amblyopia. Prism glasses are a good choice for patients with more competent deviation. 
Botulinum toxin injections can be administered to relax a strong eye muscle opposite of a weakened one to help balance vision. Strabismus surgery may be indicated for patients with persistent and steady strabismus for more than 6 to 12 months. We now turn our attention to monocular diplopia. Recall that monocular diplopia is double vision that resolves only when the affected eye is covered. A patient with monocular diplopia due to an ocular cause will report seeing one real image with a superimposed hazy image. Transient monocular diplopia is associated with tear film insufficiency. In a patient with monocular diplopia, the first step in evaluation should be a pinhole test. If the diplopia resolves with pinhole viewing, then the cause must be refractive and not neurological. Examples of refractive causes include tear film insufficiency, corneal irregularities such as astigmatism, abnormalities of the iris such as polychoria, and lens abnormalities such as cataracts. Further steps in evaluation should be taken to determine the etiology of refractive cause. Refractive causes of monocular diplopia are rarely emergencies. Refractive causes of monocular diplopia can be treated with glasses, contact lenses, refractive surgery, cataract surgery, or the use of artificial tears if the cause is tear film insufficiency. We are at the conclusion of our discussion of binocular and monocular diplopia. In summary, we have defined binocular diplopia as double vision that resolves by covering either eye and monocular diplopia as double vision that resolves only when the affected eye is covered. Binocular diplopia can present as horizontal, vertical, or oblique diplopia that is constant, intermittent, or variable, incomitant, or incomitant. Binocular diplopia with comitant deviation is caused by decompensated long-standing strabismus, while binocular diplopia with incomitant deviation can be due to conditions involving the nerve, muscle, or neuromuscular junction. Evaluation of binocular diplopia includes a careful history and eye exam and may require CT or MRI imaging as well as neurosurgery or neurological evaluation for life-threatening causes. The goal of managing binocular diplopia is achieving maximal single binocular vision. Monocular diplopia presents as one real image with a superimposed hazy image. It most often results from non-urgent refractive causes. Evaluation should begin with a pinhole test, followed by determination of the etiology of refractive error. Monocular diplopia can be treated with correction of refractive error or the use of artificial tears if the cause is tear film insufficiency.